Volcano Train! Hi, I'm Lavi and this is Oli. We are attempting a new Guinness World Record to become the youngest pair to circumnavigate the globe by motorcycle. After riding 3000 miles across Europe, we are now ready to explore the roads of North Africa. Click the subscribe button to follow our journey around the world and let the adventure begin. Welcome back to the channel. It's day number 80 on our around the world trip. And we are here on the <laughs> outskirts of Nuadibu, the second largest city in Mauritania. And we are in a place called Villa Maguela, which is a nice little retreat hostel type place, just right next to the ocean. Come and have a look at how close we are to the ocean. Look at that! Oh, and there's a cormorant cool flying over, just over here. How cool is that? And there's a little island, which is full with pelicans. Just over there, which is really cool as well. And you have a lot of little, little fish in the ocean here. It's very nice, very, very nice spot. But it's incredibly windy as well. <laughs> <laughs> so we have spent the last few days here doing a little bit of editing, a little bit of relaxing after our long leg down the coast of Western Sahara. We needed a bit of a break and now we've had that and we're refreshed and ready to continue the road south. So let me show you guys where we're heading today. Okay, so we are all the way down here in Nuadibu in Mauritania. Today we are going to be heading into Nuadibu to have a little look around before making our way down south along this road to reach the very small town of Shami, about halfway between Nuadibu and Nuakshot. So we thought that we wouldn't be able to make it all the way to Nuakshot today. It's just a little bit too far and we can't really guarantee that the roads are gonna be drivable, if there's gonna be sand on the roads, potholes, things to slow us down. So we've gone for the halfway point and Shami, this little town, is apparently a very new town, only kind of popped up in the last 10 or 15 years. I think it's related to uh, mining around the area, but it should be just about big enough for us to find a place to stay. So before you continue watching, please, please, please guys, subscribe to our channel. We have about 140 miles, which is 240 kilometers to go, and it's already 9.30, so better hit the road, let's go. Okay, it's time to hit the road and head into a little exploration of Nuadibu. It's nice to be back on Bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> I missed you. I don't know, I kind of liked that little scooter actually. <laughs> you know, it was just, okay, it had no power whatsoever and when the wind blew, you almost fell over. But, you know, there was just a simplicity about it that I really liked. Yeah, it was very charming. Yeah. You know, but Bumblebee is a machine. Yeah, Bumblebee will take us around the world, that's for sure. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Bumblebee is certainly capable of that. So today we're first going to be heading into Nuadibu, Mauritania's second largest city, which we're currently on the outskirts of, uh, in a beautiful little spit that comes off just north of the city. And uh, this is a beautiful, calm place. It was a really nice place to spend the last couple of days. And we have been into Nuadibu a couple of times. <laughs> when we went in with the scooter, 
we managed to get ourselves some cash and a sim card and i went in yesterday to get insurance for bumblebee which was all good so i just got the insurance for our bike here in Nuadibu, and uh they've written suzuko i say what is suzuko he goes mm, no no it doesn't matter don't worry it's fine mm, is it fine <laughs> we'll see how suzuko goes <laughs> for our trip here in Mauritania. Managed to get insurance to cover us for the whole time we're here. And it only cost about 11 or 12 euro. It's really not that bad compared to what we paid in Morocco yeah. for our insurance there. So that's good. So I managed to get all that sorted. So right now we're just gonna go in, check the place out, and then we'll be hitting the road another 140 miles to Shami. Whoa! <laughs> Welcome to Nuadibu, <laughs> <laughs> the land of old Mercedes cars. <laughs> and just desert around you. <laughs> yeah, so this is a bit of a crazy place um, to drive, to be honest. Um, half these cars really look like they're on the verge of breaking down and half of them are smashed up pretty badly and at least 40 years old. But you know, somehow, everything seems to work and the people seem to get around <laughs> yeah. but i tell you what i came out in the evening to get some pizza and that's when i found out that half of these cars don't have headlights and often they're just using their hazard lights and just putting them on constantly as they're sort of like i'm here i'm here but I still can't see anything. <laughs> but yeah, I tell you what, good on Mercedes for creating a car that's so bloody strong. Hey. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you can see <laughs> it's still running. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, Mercedes 1900, 1900. You got a few little Peugeots, some Renaults around as well. But yeah, man, that Mercedes car if you want to get a car that seems to never die, get one of those. <laughs> so the town, or the city, Nuadibu, has, I think, something like 100, 150,000 people living here. Second largest city in Mauritania, behind Nuakchot, which I think has around a million people, or a million something. And Nuadibu is pretty much centered on this main road that we're taking now, which is the Route Nationale 2. The Route National 2. And so we're going to take this road all the way down through Nuadibu to the bottom. And there should be a nice little boat yard with a lot of fishing boats that we can check out down there. And also, we don't know if it still exists, but there was this um, sh ship graveyard. Yes, yes. Which is worth checking out. Yeah, although a lot of people have told us that uh, most of the ships that were there have actually fallen to pieces and that like 10, 15 years ago it was really cool to see. But, you know, we'll still head down there and see if there are any wrecked ships left. Yeah. So yeah, those are pretty much the two most famous things to see in this, uh, in this city. The, uh, the fishing boat yard and the ship graveyard. So we'll check those two out before hitting the road to Shami. Okay, so according to the map, the port that we're looking for should be up ahead, but the road has just finished with its tarmac. So, I'm not exactly sure that it's worth going ahead. I don't know. <laughs> um, first of all, is this the port? Yes. It's like we are pretty close to be fair but I'm just not sure what's gonna happen if we start going that way I mean the other way would be we go uh, I think we're gonna have to do that here and then along and then check here okay let's do that so we'll go backwards to oh. there yeah once okay. we hit that street we go down once we hit this street we go this way okay okay So 
So maybe at the end of this street we'll be there. Should be just right next to us. Looks like it's a bit of a checkpoint. I'm just gonna ask him. Okay. Le Porte Artisanal. This boat here, this blue boat, uh -huh. this is one of those boats that is in this port. They're all like that. Okay. But uh, I need to ask this guy. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, c'est le port artisanal? Oui, c'est le port artisanal. Port artisanal. Uh, c'est possible de voir ou non? Vous êtes de quelle nationalité? Des touristes? Oui. De quelle nationalité? Espagnol? Oh, oh, ang anglais et Allemagne. Allemagne. Oui. Where are we? Oh. Oh. Ah, let's get off the road. It's okay. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, let's turn the cameras off for a minute. Okay, so now we're coming back from the port. Uh, so we went to the guys, we gave our passports, and they said, okay, you can go and look at it, but uh, taking any photos or video is forbidden. So we were like, okay, all right, that's fine. We'll go check it out anyway. So we went to go check it out. We got to the gate and the guy said, unfortunately, our French isn't good enough to really understand, but something about authorization and blah, blah, blah. And basically, at the end of the day, he wouldn't let us come through into the port. Hold on a minute. Just got to uh, make my way through. There we go. <laughs> oh, mental. Um, yeah, basically, at the end of the day, they wouldn't let us into the port to check out the boats. So, at least we tried. But I think we'll have to move on to the next place, which is the ship graveyard, and see what's going on with that place. So we'll head south out of the city, and we'll see if there are any shipwrecks to be seen on the coast. <laughs> so we've reached the end of the road and there's another another checkpoint another port that we can't really cross so I'm just gonna walk over to the coast here <laughs> okay no so that fella was saying I can't walk over there and check out the coast either so <laughs> I guess that's have to continue on our way hey eh? So, sightseeing site number two failure. Yeah, we're just gonna take this little road off now and just have a little look. It looks like it goes next to the coast. I can see that there's boats out in the bay, but how many of them are shipwrecks, I really don't know. They call this area the ship graveyard of Nuadibu. So, it could very well be that these ships are decommissioned ships. Oh look, here we go, we've got a little bit of a view out over the bay here. Let's just stop here. Okay, just gonna stop here. Mm -hmm. I think that this is probably what they mean by the ship graveyard of Nuadibu. I think that these boats are effectively shipwrecks or ships that are being decommissioned though i'm not 100 percent sure they might just be normal boats Really the way I came. Yeah. I just realized, look at the sign. I have no idea, but that was probably a quite a bad idea to go and check that out. I think we should jump on and probably uh, make a swift move away from Nuadibu. Okay, so it turned out the one place that we went to stop and have a look at the boats had a huge sign that said, dangerous, <laughs> dangerous for the public, forbidden to be here. And that's why there was a fellow walking over to us when we were over there, so, so that's that. Anyway, I think that definitely concludes our sightseeing experience in Nuadibu.
Yeah, it's a little bit sad that I make it so difficult for us to see things, but this is just what it is at the moment and maybe we have to come back at one point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, perhaps on foot or with a taxi or something like that it would be easier to see the things, but just as we are with this motorbike, just can't seem to, to get to where we want to get to. Anyway, we've got quite a road to go. We've still got about 140 miles to come off of this spit where Nuadibu sits and back onto the mainland of Mauritania and then south until we get to Shami. So uh, yeah, let's just hit the road, hey? Yes, let's hit the road. Okay, we're heading on our way out of Nuadibu and a lot of people have woken up, it looks like, because it is massively busier than what it was when we came in look at this sea of old cars oh my goodness so we had to get some groceries as well and now we just got to fuel up and then we're pretty much good to go on the road but man it's hot and busy here i tell you now i'm definitely ready to get out on the open road back out into the into the nothingness after the everything here <laughs> Look how windy and sandy it is out here. This is a pretty hostile environment to drive in, I must admit. And look, sand blowing over the road. We've got a strong wind coming from the coast. Oh my God, it's just mental. Yeah, it's super uncomfortable. It's very not nice at all. <laughs> yeah, at the moment we're still heading north in order to get off of this spit that Nuadibu sits on before we're hitting the mainland of Mauritania and so we're still traveling against the wind at the moment and it's terrible but uh, hopefully after we turn around and start heading south we'll have the wind behind us and that'll be make for a much more comfortable ride yeah it's terrible like that <laughs> You can see here up ahead they've got uh, a digger trying to clear the sand and the car just broke down apparently as well yeah perhaps it did yeah you don't really want to break down here Yeah, that's not really fun to be there and something going wrong, no way. And I'm getting sand blowing in my helmet as well. I think this first part of the ride is going to be pretty crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I think with the car it's actually quite alright to ride on sand. Yeah, not for us though, not for us. No. We do not want to be getting into that deep stuff on that side or that side, I tell no you. No way. Oh, they tried to build something here, but you can see everything is... Like, it's, it's nearly covered completely by the sand dunes. So, yeah. that didn't work out very well. No, you can see that whatever you do out here, the desert will just reclaim it. Yeah. It's insane here, insane. Five thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. Six thousand. Another milestone completed, hey? Six thousand, baby. Six thousand miles. That is actually officially. 10,000 kilometers. Oh, is it? I think so. Look, we've got another digger. Wow. Trying to Good job. dig away the desert. <laughs> Good job. Good luck, my friend. Good luck. <laughs> He's going to need it. Wow. Yep. And that last thousand that we've done has been pretty much this desert coast road all the way from the bottom of Morocco all the way down through to here that's basically been the last thousand miles 
looks like a bit of sand in the road coming up so we're going to take it quite easy here yeah we've got sand coverage it's okay yeah i don't think it's very deep no least. no just go through it uh-huh yeah just go go through it yeah i am i'm just uh, taking it nice and easy yeah it's okay yeah yeah perfect <laughs> nice. yeah this highway never gives up hey yeah and it's really interesting because you can see sometimes here along this road on the right and on the left like little houses and shacks and some trees we saw some goats some horses it's like <laughs> it, it looks such a like incredibly difficult place to live but somehow people managing to even live along here it's absolutely incredible it's about 80 miles now until we reach the small town of Shami. so let's hope that the sandy desert road is good to us Just entered a, an area of road covered in potholes. Yeah, this road's pretty broken up here. And the thing is, this road looks newer than the road we were just on, but it's already completely fallen to pieces with some repairs here and there, but yeah, and it's a bit of a challenge. Yeah, it looked quite new at the beginning, but we quickly realized that it was just... Well, it's just full of holes, eh? Yeah, but it looks quite nice with the black road and then the sand uh, flying across it. Yeah, it's pretty surreal, hey? Yeah. There's something hypnotizing about it. And I'm so surprised to see so many of these old Mercedes actually making this crossing of the desert. They're going like 500 kilometers across the desert in like a 50 year old German or French car that was never made to do this. <laughs> I mean, I'm just really, I'm really impressed with those cars. We see a lot of people making that, that journey from Nouakchott to Nouadhibou. That's a brave journey to make in a car like that, I must admit. No. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Poor guys. <laughs> it was inevitable that we would see a few of those old Mercedes broken down, hey? Yeah. What is this town here? I have no idea. It's just a very small collection of concrete houses in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, there's even like a little shop apparently. There's a little ambulance or paramedic station there. Oh. That's good that they have something like that. And a mosque. Nice. Some of the buildings looking quite nice. I wonder what the people are doing here, really. Yeah, me too. There must be like workers or something. Oh. That car does not look healthy. No. Look at this bit. <laughs> That's smooth. So we've had 
to stop to put water on ourselves because it's about 38 degrees here now as we've come inland and it is super 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 hot and the wind is so hot so we're gonna put a jug of water over us cool down a bit feels a lot better with a wet t-shirt so uh, we also had a bite to eat with some baguette and some cheese of course laughing cow cheese so we'll uh, we'll hit the road for the last leg definitely been surprised by the heat here I must admit because we had so many nice cold days on the coast it was cool in Nuevo so you know we left this morning not really uh, not really prepared for this uh, massive amount of heat that's just hit us wow 38 degrees at the moment yeah it's really 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 hot and I can feel already my head and it's not very comfortable no not at all we have been drinking 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 but it's still apparently not enough Okay, it looks like we are coming in to our destination for today, Shami. You can see there's quite a lot of activity going on already here, wow. Yeah, that's crazy, wow. Very yeah. busy. Yeah, yeah, this is like a hot spot in the middle of the desert. <laughs> and the temperature nice. has reached 40 degrees at the moment. So it is not a cool day in Shami at the moment. Look, should, we ch should we check out this hotel? Lavi seems to have found a German that she's chatting to, or a, a guy from Belgium apparently who speaks German. So I'm sure she's going to work something out for us. <laughs> so Lavi did make a deal with the fella there from Belgium. I haven't got his name actually yet. He has a room. We managed to get a price of 600, which is around 15 euro. So that's not too bad. It's the same price we were paying where we just were for the last couple of days. And apparently he says there's air conditioning there, which would be pretty crazy if it's working. Yeah, look at this place, Auberge Sahara. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Some goats just jumping off the back of the trailer. <laughs> Hello, goat. Let me look. It's the goats. Oh, yes. <laughs> What's your name? Oliver. Normally, normally. Yes. My real name. Uh -huh. It's Peter Oliver Henri Adolson Guy Quadri. <laughs> wow. And here, the first time, I live uh, eight years in, in Morocco. And in Morocco, like here, in Arabic land, uh, the people uh, don't say. Uh, 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 pay. Okay. 
Pierre, like... it's beer. Oh. Beer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the people say Oliver, Oliver. Okay. Well, I, well, my name is Oli. Yeah. Nice, yes, yes. So nice to meet you, another Oliver. The best people. Yeah, the best people. The best people. Yeah. Two Olivers out here in the desert. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> Whoa, look at this. Yeah. I can feel it, it's working. Awesome. So I think we have our room for the night. It's not very extravagant, but it has air conditioning and it will do. So let's do it. Good evening, guys. We made it. Alive. Not really happy, but alive. <laughs> yeah, that heat absolutely killed us and yes. especially killed Lavi. Yeah, I'm absolutely dead. Like, I have so, so headache and I'm so thankful that we got an air condition. So I just have to lay down and wait for my head to get better. Yeah, yeah, we really need a good rest after so many miles along that road in the heat, definitely. Our bike recorded at the end over 40 degrees. So I wanted to fill up Bumblebee as well when we arrived in town, but the fuel station is packed with cars queuing to get in, like probably a queue of like 20 cars to get into this fuel station. So I think we're going to try that one tomorrow morning instead and hope that it's better uh, because probably this is the only place you can fuel up for many, many miles. We've got about 150 miles to do tomorrow, so we better fuel up before we hit the road. Yes, yeah, so that's it from us today. We hope you enjoyed the episode. If so, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends and family. We will see you next time.